Hi, I'm Morten Lisa from the ShopRite Group and this is On The Shelf where we talk about what it takes to get your product retail ready. Today we're speaking to Tavo from Toys With Ruth. We're going to be talking a lot about how they went into product selection and how they knew that these are the products that they wanted to put on the shelf with ShopRite. Tavo, after almost 20 years in the TV industry, you and your wife decided that we're going to go with Toys With Ruth. How did you guys go about it? and? How did you choose the specific product that you guys went into choosing? So for us, it started in 2015. Um, at the time, my daughters were seven and three. And we actually bumped into somebody who was selling, you know, dolls at the, in the boot of the car. And my wife had suggested we should buy two for our daughters, you know, um, one for each of them. And so we did. And then she thought, you know what, um, I might have friends, you know, thinking to herself, I might have friends who want this product. So we then decided to speak to the owner of the brand and bought 200, went on social media and we sold those. And then we bought a thousand and then we thought, okay, well, there's something here. So initially when we started, it wasn't really a business, it was just a product that we liked that we thought we could get out there. But once we saw the reception and how the public were receiving it, we then decided to say, okay, this particular toy space is something we want to go into. And looking at the time, in 2015, there were a lot of other people who were creating dolls. You had the Bompim Bobbies and different other brands that were coming out. And so we decided to create a house, Toys with Roots, that was going to compete with the other retailers for toys to say, we are the center for toys that celebrate African children. And that's really how we started with the product and with the toys. What type of dolls are they? Maybe if we can give our viewers some context around that. So when we started, we predominantly you know specialized in fashion doll, in what they call fashion dolls you know these are what typically somebody would say barbie looking type of you know dolls we 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 supplied that to the market but what we realized is you know as we did a bit of research and looking into the toy space that baby dolls are, are the best selling range within the within the space and when we started partnering with ShopRite, which we'll speak about and um, that's how we decided on in terms of the type of products that we were going to supply and the type of range and dolls we're going to design for um, ShopRite. You're competing with legacy brands where I walk into a store and I grew up on certain toys. And I just wanted to speak about product differentiation in the sense that what did you guys do different to make a customer look at your product differently? Um, so when we looked at the market, you know, an assessment, and I mean, obviously we are part of the greater general public, we had seen that there's obviously were some brown dolls available on the shelves, but a lot of them, you know, public weren't necessarily happy with them, you know. And for me, when I assessed it and looked at what the outcome or why is the reason for that is, you know, I think it's, it's some sort of unconscious bias that we might necessarily have. And what we had a lot of the times that the, the dolls that were on shelves that were at least brown dolls were something that were imported from a shelf from, from China. And what happens is if they look, as, look at us in the same way, in the same vein that we all look the same, they can, you know, appreciate our unique looks, our beauty, our individuation. And so when we came into the space, we wanted to design specifically toys that are centered and designed around African children, you know, um, accentuating our beauty and our differentness and our individuation, you know. Um, and so when we started designing the Rainbow Kids dolls for ShopRite and creating other products around the toy space, our key thing was to say beautiful brown toys um, or beautiful brown dolls for um, beautiful brown children. And so because we did that, I think that's how we were able to attract um, a big part of the public buying into our range. But just to add another um, point to that, so when we walked into the shop right and we started to speak into the buyer, in this specific instance, you know, doing a fact-finding mission. And I think that's important for suppliers to do, to say, okay, let me do a fact-finding mission in terms of what does my customer, who's the buyer, want. Category buyers understand the category better than many people, you know, uh, because they've worked in this particular space for a long time. And so we did that. And so it, there was a lot of things that ShopRite helped us to understand in terms of pricing correctly, you know, um, positioning correctly and it's not just about having a nice toy and think it's going to move they look at other things and other aspects and so it was great working with a buyer like the one we had who worked with us on this journey you spoke around product extension so when do you guys decide let's move on to another product and keep on expanding our key focus is you know toys that celebrate African children and we believe that children should see themselves and their greatness in everything you know in the toys they play with the books they read the media they consume and so um, for us it was a natural progression 
conversation and how it went. But in relation to the Rainbow Kids with ShopRite, the conversation with the buyer that we had was to say, they always had a long-term plan to say, we want to incorporate Toys with Roots within the ShopRite family, and we want to grow with the business. So when we started in, in 2019, we started with three dolls, you know, Bula and Nandikana. And that was, you know, how 2019 started we were in, in stores in 2019, August. You know, we did pretty well. 2020 was a bit quiet. So, I mean, in 2020, in 2020 actually January, we had a meeting again to say, okay, oh, well, the expansion for 2020. COVID happened, that was canned. In 2021, we had a meeting with, with the buyer again to say, okay, how do we expand for 2022? And in 2022, then we're able to introduce the puzzles, which are two, um, 48 piece and 100 piece. We introduced the ball. And then we also introduced doll and stroller as well. So we've seen, you know, um, the willingness of, 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 of ShopRite, um, at least in that category of the buyer, to want to grow with the business and to want to expand it. You know, there's been some successes and, and there's been some, you know, some, some learnings that we've had. And so we continue on this journey with them. So obviously what I hear you say, or in summary what you're saying is, in order for you to expand a bit better, it's, it's, it's really critical to speak to the business and obviously find out what their needs are, where they think you should be going, if you're on the right track and work together. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think it's important, but I think it starts with your personal vision, right? So we had a personal vision, we know where we want to go. And so we try then to find out how do we align our Ooh. vision with the vision of the retailer. So, I mean, um, ShopRite really, their focus is to retail products. Right, so we then need to align, you know, the mass retailer element with it, with the toy design and creative element with it, and then we find a perfect mix between us. So we are able to create something that suits their price point and their customer's price point, which they, which they understand very well. We understand the customer needs in terms of product, you know, design and need and packaging, which we understand very well, and then the partnership works out perfectly. So. I would say if you're a small supplier, understand your business, but it's not enough. You need to understand your customer's business as well and be able to think from their point of view. And that's where obviously the retailer comes in with all the data and information that they have in order to partner with your vision. And then you obviously make it a success. Exactly. I mean, you know, when you start, you start with, you don't know what you don't know. And so, um, and, and, and I speak, you know, from a point of, of privilege, we had a great buyer who was willing to let us into their, into their thinking, you know, to say, this is how things work around here. This is where we need you to be. And they were able to then, you know, um, assist us to get there to, in order for, because they wanted to work with us, they wanted the partnership and it's worked well so far. Thank you so much, Tapo, for your insight. I hope your toys with Roots grow from strength to strength. Thank you. And I mean, I think it's very important what you're doing. I think entrepreneurs do need to be ushered in, you know, into the retail space because it's a new space, especially for creatives and designers who are coming with products. And so I think what you're doing is very important. Oh, 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 oh,